what happens when you realize that you've been assigned an angel or a few angels? What do you do? What does that mean? Well, we're going to discover that in today's video. I'm going to be speaking from my own experience when I for, for myself, when I first discovered that I had been assigned angels, and I figured I need to know what to do with that. What does that mean? What are the implications? What is my responsibility? Um, and of course, we'll also look at the biblical um, uh, explanation for that. <clears throat> so um, it's been several years since uh, the first time I uh, realized I had uh, um, an angel. Uh, and that, the first one I discovered was Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel's an archangel. And uh, I'll go into a bit more detail about that later. Um, then I discovered uh, I had an army of angels that was gifted to me a couple of years ago, an entire angel uh, army of angels to help me do uh, fulfill uh, the calling that God has given me on my life. Uh, and then more recently, I discovered another angel called Bethany, and she is more of an administrative type angel, kind of like, I guess, a personal assistant, you could call it. Um, so um, first of all, we need to establish that we have authority over angels the, uh, to steward them. We are responsible for them. Um, <clears throat> and we're um, uh, so, so in God's kingdom order, we are above angels in authority level. So um, let's establish that first before we go on. Um, and we'll look at this biblically. Uh, and I just want to say, too, this isn't about being better than or, um, you know, um, it, it's not about God loves people more than angels. It's, it's nothing about that kind of favor <clears throat> or favoritism. It's more about order, right? Uh, in, in an army, for example, right? There are different ranks of people and, they, and, and, and each one has a different responsibility, level of responsibility, and each one has a different job. Um, now, if there wasn't a, a, a ranking, um, then uh, which establishes a chain of command, then uh, everything would be a muck. Like it would be, we would easily be defeated if we went to war. <clears throat> so it's the same thing in God's kingdom. God's uh, kingdom is very much about order and uh, structure to keep chaos out and to keep peace in. All right. And everybody knows exactly what's expected to them of them and what they can expect of everyone else. All right. So let's look at Colossians 2.18. Paul, the apostle, is speaking to uh, the people of the church at Colossae. And he says, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism. What that means is it's the practice of kind of uh, strict self-denial to kind of say I'm more spiritually elite because I do all these hard things. Uh, that's what asceticism is. It's a, it's a form of spiritual elitism or virtue signaling. It would be a common term today. <clears throat> so I'll start again. He says, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels. Go on in detail, uh, going on in detail about visions puffed up, uh, which is prideful, uh, without reason by his sensuous mind. So Paul is warning about pride, false humility, um, spiritual elitism, self-righteousness, in addition to, he, he compares that to the worship of angels, which we're not to do. <clears throat> All right, we'll look at 1 Corinthians 6, 3. Um, when we are fully uh, mature and we've moved on to our uh, eternal life in heaven, after our life here on earth, we, um, we will become judges of angels, all right, which puts us above them in kingdom order. So 1 Corinthians 6, 3 says, do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more matters of this life? All right. <clears throat> and then in Revelation 26, it says, blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resur resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. So, so we are, um, uh, because of the resurrection of Christ, and we, we are 
uh, resurrected with him, if we believe in him, um, we become his priests, his ambassadors. Um, a, a, an ambassador is an actual spokesperson for the king or the president or prime minister that uh, that a person represents and the ambassador represents. An ambassador <clears throat> is uh, uh, given permission to speak for the king or the president or prime minister who again who is representing. So when the ambassador speaks, it's as if the king or the president or prime minister is speaking himself. That's the level of authority that we have. Revelation 4, 2 to 4 says at once, uh, so um, uh, John has been taken uh, into a an open vision into heaven to see the future. And he says, at once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby. <clears throat> a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. So this is, of course, God. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. The elders are people who have passed uh, into eternity and are given that level of authority. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. So you see, uh, once again, establishing the authority uh, level that man has were seated uh, beside Christ, who is the King of Kings. <clears throat> All right. Angels were sent to serve us so that we can fulfill uh, our mission to build the kingdom. So Hebrews 1.14 says, are they not all ministering spirits? Because angels are spirits. They live in the spiritual realm. Sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. We are the ones who inherit salvation, right? We we need that, <laughs> but we're the ones who inherit salvation through our um, our faith in Jesus Christ, right? So the ministering spirits, the angels, are here to serve man, mankind. All right. Um, Another uh, uh, a bit of proof here is we're able to command demons to leave things, to leave people, to leave buildings or properties. Um, so we're given an authority to cast out demons. Well, the demons, if we didn't have authority over them, wouldn't leave, right? Like we wouldn't have that authority. But in Mark 16, 17, it says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues. So we have the authority to tell demons to leave. Well, demons are simply um, evil angels or dark angels, right? Um, they're on the same uh, level, have the same power as good angels, although the evil angels, the demons, were kicked out of heaven. Uh, but they're the same, um, uh, how do I put it, the, the same uh, beings, if you will, just a good side and an evil side. All right. Um, Revelation, um, oh, let's see, even angels say they are servants, right? So Revelation 9, 9, 10, uh, shows that they are not above us in kingdom order. So it says, then the angel said to me, to John, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb. That's us. And he added, these are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet. So John fell at the angel's feet to worship him. But he said to me, the angel said to John, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. So even the angels say, no, don't worship me. You're not to bow down to me. All right. And at the very least here, it says we are um, we are fellow worshipers of God. Um, we are fellow servants to serving God. All right. So I think that establishes our authority over angels, that we are to steward them, which means we're to love them, we're to engage them, we're to assign them um, and, and manage them well to for the purposes of uh, building God's kingdom. All right. 
Um, everybody has angels assigned to them. And let me explain how I know that. Uh, I was in a, a church, uh, it was a conference, and we were worshiping. And suddenly I saw the room, I, with my spiritual eyes opened, and I saw the room was filled with angels. And in fact, almost one to one, per, one person to one angel, almost. And um, what I saw was uh, family angels. And uh, so as we were all standing, uh, worshiping, beside, you know, that lady there and that man there and, and that, uh, you know, uh, man over there, beside each one of them was an angel standing like as much like a soldier kind of like uh like an uh, like one of king arthur's knights kind of thing so they had all white tunics they had white helmets uh kind of like king arthur's time and they all had a staff um that they were holding and the bottom of the staff touched the ground and the top of the staff um uh, i guess the staff was about I don't know, eight feet high. And uh, hanging from the top of the staff was a banner uh, bearing each banner had a different coat of arms according to the family that they were assigned to. So these, these um, angels were standing with the family member that was represented in that church. And uh, they were standing perfectly still it was as if they weren't even breathing they were motionless standing with their all the different the angels all kind of looked the same but the banners were all different because they had different coat of arms and um and i said to god like they're standing like stiller than still like what what's up with that and and he said they are waiting to be assigned they're waiting to be engaged they're waiting for their families to use them to 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 um uh to to assign them to give them assignments and um and and they want they want to serve they want to serve um and they're but they're waiting uh because i've told them they uh god will obviously give commands to angels and tell and tell them what he needs that wants them to do but um in we are in a time now where god wants us to learn how to steward our angels so there are some angels that are sitting motionless because we have not engaged them yet um and so um uh that was the first experience i had with engage actually um stewarding angels engaging them um I'll go back now and talk a little bit about the angels that I've been assigned and how I've learned to steward them. And like I said, uh, I can explain to you uh, where I'm at. There's likely a long way to go, but I can explain to you my experience. Uh, so my personal angel, Bethany, um, uh, the kind of administrative assistant uh, type angel, she's meant to be a, like a a friend, a confidant. Uh, although, of course, I had, do have a very good relationship with Father, with with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I can also have a relationship with Bethany, and um, so she handles administrative type tasks. And I'll be honest with you, I don't engage with her as much as I uh, I could. Um, uh, and um, I, I guess she's my angel that I, I engage with the least, uh, or I haven't quite figured out how, how to engage her. But um, uh, it's important to understand the names of your angels. And um, uh, Bethany means fruit of Israel, peace, prosperity, solitude, communion with God, delicacy, recovering plunder. Uh, they're positive. Uh, um, they bring provision. Uh, it's about favorable return to health, profit, and wealth. All right. There's a large theme of wealth there. Um, and um, so this tells us when we know the name of our angels, this tells us another way we can engage them. That's their assignment. So she is um, brings pr uh, a peace, prosperity. Uh, communion with God, delicacy, recovering plunder, uh, favorable return of health, profit, and wealth. So these are ways I can I can say to her, um, if there's any uh, 
uh, um, let's talk of finances out there that are supposed to be in my bank account and that aren't for whatever reason the enemy is restricting them or blocking them from coming to me would you go and gather them right so again because she's about um, provision favorable return to health uh, profit and wealth so uh, so th that gives us a clue in how we can engage our angels all right let's talk about Gabriel well Gabriel isn't actually an arch an archangel so a very high-ranking uh um angel i first became aware of him um goodness i guess about five years ago um and i i could feel around me um uh, it, well it ended up being spine you know the spines of a feather um where all the soft fluffy stuff kind of attaches to down the middle i could feel them all around me and i was like what what am I feeling? It doesn't feel comfortable. I'm feeling, and then I realized it was the respines of many, many feathers, giant feathers. And um, and then I I sensed um this uh I was I was it was like I was being hugged in within the wings of an angel, uh, like they were um holding me tight. And um and so I asked God, I said, well, what am I like, what is this? Like, and, and, and who is this? And he said, well, it's an angel. It's my angel, Gabriel. I was a bit shocked because Gabriel is such a high ranking uh, angel. And, and uh, God said, he will bring message messages for you. He will also protect you. That's why I was kind of, you know, encased in, 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 and surrounded by these angel wings. I kind of like I was in a cocoon um, and he'll protect. And now he's not always with me. He's there sometimes, but not always. And when he is, I can definitely feel him. Um, but he brings messages to me uh, when God has something to uh, to send to me. Gabriel means God is my strong man. All right. So so uh, there's there's authority in that. Uh, Gabriel is a messenger angel. So he was the one who brought the message to Mary that she was going to have uh, a child called and uh, name him Emmanuel or Jesus. Uh, Gabriel also was the one who announced John the Baptist's birth. Um, and he is also the one who interpreted the dreams for the uh, and visions of Daniel. So um, he's a very much he's a prophet. He's prophetic. He gives he brings messages. Um, and um, there's strength. There's a protectiveness about it as well. So this is the nature of Gabriel. I, I have to say with Gabriel, he's actually quite silent, uh, except when he's delivering a message and it's, it's very much, he delivers the message and then goes, there's no dialogue, <laughs> uh, with Gabriel. Um, and, uh, I guess you could call him the strong silent type, but that's the nature of the relationship. It's, it's very peaceful. It's very quiet. Um, but that is my relationship with him. Um, he seems to be on an assignment directly from God. So I don't give him commands. I don't ask him to do things. He is somehow, he only takes direction from God. And of course, that's fine by me. And um, that's just the nature of our relationship. Very different than Bethany, who's more like a friend. Um and also very different from my relationship with the commander of my angel army. So it was about two years ago when God um, uh, said, I am now giving you an army, your own army of angels. And there are other people in the world that have received army or angel armies. And I was like, whoa, like a whole army, like, what am I going to do with that? And he said, you will need them to fulfill your mission. And, uh, and that was, that. and so I was like, okay, well, how do I, what do I do with an army? And um, so I, I quickly figured out um, that I had, there's a commander and the army has ranks and, and, and they have an order that I don't understand, but the commander does. So I simply call him the commander of my angel army. Uh, I, I don't yet have a name for him other than commander. And, um, uh, 
I, I guess the best way to describe me as stewarding or managing that, uh, those angels is kind of like, uh, like I've had many businesses and I would ask certain people to do certain things within the business, right? And it's much the same thing. So uh, for example, um, and I never speak to the angels. I only speak through the commander. So uh, first of all, um, because I want to follow kingdom order and that's the way you do it. I speak to the commander, the commander speaks to the angels. Um, so that's one reason is to follow kingdom order is very important. Um, but also because I, he has an expertise, he knows his angels and I don't, he has an expertise on how to send them the timing and everything that I don't have. And so um, I will say things like if I sense, um, you know, maybe there's a, a danger for, for my children, then I will say, and I've, I've, I've already sent them, but uh, I will say to the commander of my angel armies, I say, commander, I'm asking you to send however many angels you see fit to uh, the bedrooms of my, uh, my, my children and my grandchild. Uh, and where they will sing sweet melodies of God's uh, um, truth and love for them and uh, guard and protect them as they sleep. And he knows the right angels to send and he knows the timing and where to send them. So I simply give them a, a command and then he takes care of the details. Um, there was another time when... Um, somebody on my team uh, said we need to, God is saying we need to send angels to guard the coastline of a piece of land that we know God is giving to us. And so I went to my, the commander of my angel army and I said, commander, would you send uh, the right angels and enough angels to guard the coastline of this, that piece of land, that specific piece of land um, to guard the coastline. So I, I, gave it was god told us me what to do and i told the commander he knew which angels to send how many and and how to patrol um um oh there was another time when i had a it was either a vision or a dream of a brinks truck so brinks truck brinks is that company that transports money from the bank to a main depot or uh, from bank machines so they fill bank machines and that sort of thing so they carry money from place to place so they're armored trucks and they usually have two um kind of soldier type uh, men uh uh driving and collecting the money and transporting the money well in this vision or dream i saw the a brinks truck that was supposed to be delivering a lot of money to my bank account or to me for uh, um, my mission. And, uh, but I saw this Brinks truck was stopped and there were uh, several um, uh, people, uh, uh, I'll say think, uh, beings, all dressed in black with black balaclavas uh, with our, our machine guns. And they were holding this Brinks truck um, under siege and it wasn't able to go anywhere. And the two um, uh, drivers were inside. And uh, so I sent, I said, commander of my angel army, I ask you to send um, angels to end that siege, to take out those um, things, in, in, um, beings in black and, uh, and, and to uh, give safe passage for the money to land where it is supposed to land. Um, those are just three examples of ways I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, sent direction and stewarded my angel army. All right. Stewarding angels is like anything. If you don't steward it well, or you don't steward it at all, you lose it. Right. Um, Matthew 25, 23 says his, uh, so this is the parable of the gold coins where he, the master gave, uh, three of his different people. Uh, do three of his different servants, three different amounts of money based on how much they could manage well. And uh, when he returned, the, uh, the, uh, the servant that he gave um, uh, 
the two servants that he gave the most money to, he replied. Uh, so they doubled his money while he was gone. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So you see, when we steward what we're given well, we're given more, right? And so when we steward one angel well, we're given more. When we take responsibility, um, then we're given more. Um, now, something to keep in mind is angels don't do anything that God that goes against God. So they're not like a genie in a lamp, right? Where you can say, bring me a million dollars or a billion dollars. It, it, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, they're, um, even though we are, you know, we have authority over angels. It's like we are, a, a, consider a little prince, a young prince, right? Um, so he's a prince. He's a royal you know, in line for the throne, but, um, and he has authority and privilege, but he's young and he doesn't yet have the knowledge or the wisdom uh, or the, the, the level of responsibility uh, it takes to, uh, to, you know, uh, manage his people. Um, so, but he's given governesses and he's given uh, teachers uh, to, to raise him and teach him. Um, and, and he's supposed to do what they say, right? So if the governess uh, disciplines him for, some, for stealing a cookie from the cookie jar, you know, um, the, it, that counts. Like the, the, that, you know, um, he's to listen to her uh, and he's to listen to um, his teachers. And uh, so what this means is that we're like that little prince, right? Now, when that prince comes of age and proves his level of responsibility and uh, wisdom and knowledge in order to manage and steward well, lead well, then he then gains steps into his authority. And it's the same for us with our angels. Um, um, it, it's almost like we're that little prince. And if we start um, giving commands to our angels that don't align with God, the angels won't do it. They will simply not obey. So uh, there's kind of a caveat there that God has given the angels. Otherwise, uh, we would use the angels for our own greed and our own pride. And um, that would not be wise. And so God has um, wisely... <laughs> um I put that little caveat in place um anyway that also means that if we mess up right it's okay they're not going to do it anyways right so we have a little bit of grace there as we're learning um uh another thing about stewarding angels i'm always very polite and thankful and respectful and i'm talking particularly with the commander of my angel army um i'm always i always thank him and i'm very respectful to him and uh, um, I, that's just God's way, right? That's God's way of leading. That's that's good steward, um, good stewardship. And um, um, the only time I I talk to the angels in the army is when I thank them. I, I will uh, sometimes take time to just thank them, to uh, to praise God, and to um, just be respectful to them. Uh, uh, and express my gratitude. That's the only time I speak to them directly. Um, uh, and other than that, I go through the commander. Having angels is a privilege and not a right. It's very much a privilege. There's a lot of responsibility. And um, so it needs to be looked at it as such. Again, they're not a genie in a lamp. <laughs> Um, so this is my personal and biblical account of stewarding angels. Um, uh, I hope that helps and um, uh, feel free to ask God to say, God, how do I, what angels do I have? What are their names? Look up their names to discover their character, their, 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 their mission, their role in your lives uh, or in your life. And um uh, and ask him, how, how do I steward them? Ask him to teach you. And he will certainly do that because he wants you to engage with your angels. Well, bless you and uh, bless your angels.